So do you think that you can manifest your soulmate? If you believe in soulmates? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Before we get into this episode, a quick word from our sponsors that make it possible. Did you know we're eating and drinking roughly a credit card's worth of plastic a week? Yep, that's right. Blue Land set out to do something about it. Eliminate the need for single-use plastic in the cleaning products we reach for the most. I'm absolutely obsessed with Blue Land for a couple of reasons. One, how they're helping the environment. Two, how convenient they make my life. And three, how freaking beautiful their pastel containers are. All you have to do is fill your reusable bottles with water, drop in the tablets, and wait for them to dissolve. You'll never have to grab bulky cleaning products on your groceries run again. My partner was a little skeptical the other day if the dishwasher tablets would work as well as the pods we usually use, but after the dishes came out sparkling clean, he was sold as well. It's not only super convenient, but Blue Land is also affordable. Refill start is just $2.25, and you can even set up a subscription or buy in bulk for additional savings. Blue Land has a special offer for listeners. Right now, get 15% off your first order by going to blueland.com slash datable. You won't want to miss this blueland.com slash datable for 15% off. That's blueland.com slash datable to get 15% off. Is anyone else struggling with what to wear these days? I feel like styles change faster than dating trends, and I certainly don't want to be buying new clothes all the time just to keep up. So enter Armoire. Armoire allows you to rent high quality designer clothing for every occasion. And when I signed up, I took a style quiz, and based on my preferences, they offer suggestions that would best match my lifestyle. The more I rent, the more on point the suggestions get. I recently rented this gorgeous Tanya Taylor silk dress for date night and got so many compliments. I wouldn't normally have chosen the style, but with Armoire, you can take chances because if you don't like it, you just swap it out. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. And if you forget the link, just head to our Instagram and find it under special offers. Before we get into this episode, we are so excited to announce our Meeting People IRL Masterclass because we've heard you loud and clear. It is the number one thing that people always say they need help with is how do I meet more people IRL? So we decided to take all of our learnings from Datable and figure out a way that can make meeting IRL more efficient, more effective, and give you the tools that you need to go into the wild with more confidence and perspective to actually meet people. So for Datable listeners, only. We're giving you $10 off because we want as many of you as possible to be able to do this masterclass. We've added a link to the show notes, or you can go to datablepodcast.com and find it on our programs page. Remember to use the code datable for $10 off. Hello, friends. Welcome to Datable. Happy to have you all back for another episode. All about manifesting, manifestations. I'm actually taking a manifestation course right now because of this episode. Oh, yeah. Are you? It's like a a month-long course. I want to hear all about what you're learning. I'm so intrigued. Well, I mean, part of it is like you have the power to bend time. (laughs) You have the power to manifest things faster than the time frame that you are accustomed to. Interesting. That's one part of it. And then your entire body has to be aligned with what you're trying to manifest. It's not just your brain saying you want this. It's like your actions, your mm. energy, like even it goes down to your nutrition. Your nutrition has to support your manifestation. It's a lot of alignment in your life. And that's like the part I'm struggling with. It's just getting like holistically aligned. Yeah, it is so important. And I feel like the question that we want to find out in this episode is, can you manifest love. I personally think you absolutely can manifest love. Yes. It sounds super woo-woo. We hear some of you being like, manifesting? How's that going to get me to the love life I want? What are you talking about? Don't I have to just go on all these dates and get there? But I do believe in like the power of the mind and then what you were just saying, like all the alignment of everything else. Yeah. And you have to like feel it in your gut, like what that feels like to find that person. 
I feel like before I met my partner, I had this feeling like they were around the corner. And I've talked about this a lot. Mm -hmm. I did have this reading with Nikki Nova, which I think got me into this more, you know, woo-woo world a little. But we had Nikki Nova, one of our favorite long-term guests. She was on the podcast and she gave UA and I both readings. And I mean, if you've been with us for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this, but she's like, your person is coming. And just hearing that was like, oh, okay. And she's like, you're going to go through some turbulent times, but just know it's part of the Mm -hmm. journey. Having that in my mind, but it wasn't just hearing it. Like I did feel it to the core. I was like, I'm ready. Like this person is coming. And I remember just like being out with a girlfriend of mine and her just complaining about dating, how there's no one out there, no one good. And I'm just like, I feel okay. I feel like it's going to happen. And I I just felt it. Yeah. And that's part of... Just planting the seed, you know, like if she didn't plant the yes. seed for you, you yes. may not have even been on that train. But because she planted the seed, it's like your body is recalibrating towards that. Like, oh, yeah, that person is around the corner. And this what I'm experiencing now is just a little turbulence. Exactly. And that is what we're doing today for all of you. We are planting the seed. <laughs> <laughs> It is a magical, powerful experience. I'm glad that we have Erin with us as a repeat guest on our show, a new mama, and (laughs) she is all about manifesting. She manifested her husband, so that's that's worth something. Yeah, we met Erin Doppelt, South by Southwest, three years ago. Maybe longer. Maybe. It was 2019. It was before the 2021 that got canceled. 2019, we met her. We had her on the podcast a ways back, her episode was called Vagina Tingles. So <laughs> right. Definitely check that one out. We will link it in the in the show notes. Also, it was actually <laughs> hilarious. It was insightful. But she's a unique blend because she's a spiritual thought leader, but she's also a trained psychologist. It's a serendipitous that we saw her again at South by. But we've been in we've been in contact with her. But you know, her life has changed so much since the first time we met her. Yet she will tell you she manifested all of this. She created this life for herself. So what you'll take away from this episode is how can you start manifesting today? What does that even mean? How do you start planting the seed? And then how to get really clear about what you're trying to manifest. So I have a very positive manifesting story as well about one of Mm -hmm. our mutual friends. Okay. So one of my best friends, she is back in San Francisco, and mm-hmm. she ha- has been gone for two years, a little like two years. She moved to Mexico because she met her partner, now partner, in Brazil at a- when she was at a wedding, just out and about, not even mm-hmm. like part of the wedding, like literally that story that they're just like out. I think he was like bartending or doing something mm-hmm. at the event. They caught each other's eyes. It's such like that crazy story that you're like, oh, it's a vacation romance. Two years later, he has now moved Mm -hmm. to the U.S. They got his visa. They are getting married next month. And it's just like could not be happier for her. And I remember her telling me before she met him that she had this moment. She's like not even a super religious person, but she was just like, God, just give me like a good man, like someone that treats me well, uh, doesn't uh, party and go crazy all the time. It's just going to be like a supportive, loving partner. And this was like right before her trip when she went there. I really believe that like putting it out there, whatever way you're going to, like it, it's kind of like what you were saying earlier about, you know, just having that frame of reference when you're out, you're like on the lookout. More. Yes. Everything you do now is calibrated towards this thing that you are asking for. And I will 100% say she found a good man who's supportive, very happy for her. I know. It's it's so wonderful. So I want to have them on the podcast because I think their story is so different than how people approach dating. And I will be like the first to admit when she first told me, I was just like, uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but they I made know. it work. They made it work. It's so incredible when you think about it. It's such a good story because they they didn't date. No. Like they basically fell into a relationship because she she ended up getting COVID. So she had to stay longer. <laughs> and then they got to know each other better because of that. Anyways, we, yes, we should have him on the podcast. It's like the 
the purest form of manifestation that truly worked. And she didn't even know she was manifesting. True. (laughs) I'm just trying to manifest a man for my aunt. (laughs) My aunt is so cool. She is 66. We lost uh, my uncle five years ago Mm. this month. And she's just been on this road to healing. I think she's on a really good path. But she has so much life in her and so much uh, good that she hasn't been able to experience with someone to share with someone. Like my uncle had just retired when he passed away and they had this like retirement plan. They were going to travel. They were going to do this. They were going to do that. Mm. And they weren't able to live out these dreams. And I think she still has it in her to do that. So she's in, she's staying with my parents right now in the U.S. It's her first time in the U.S. She's having the time of her life. She's been here for almost two months. She's traveled to more U.S. states than most Americans in the month and a half she's been here. And I think she could really use a partner who can share in that, just like share in in her passion for life together. Even though she doesn't speak much English, I think she can learn really fast. So if you know anybody who is a single man of appropriate age, I'm truly trying to manifest this for her because I think she deserves a companion who can she can share life with. I love that you're manifesting for her. I love it. Is Do you think she's in the place that she can manifest for herself or does she need like your push to be like, oh, this is possible again? I think she's got a lot of limiting beliefs right now. She just feels like, well, I'm 66. I'm widowed. Who's going to want to be with me at this stage in my life? But then I have to remind her she's at a such a great stage in her life. She's retired. Yeah. She's not dependent on anybody. My cousin's already, you know, very in- independent herself and grown. So I think she's in a really good place. And I'm trying to push her into the what if category, you know? I don't know why this made me think of it, but do you remember, UA, when we went out for dinner and we sat next to this couple? And the oh my god, yes, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say? Yes, they yes. were like they were probably in like their 60s, right? They were uh-huh. older, and uh-huh. they were of course like super chatty to us. And we learned that they were high school sweethearts, right? Or like they uh-huh. like knew each other in high school, and then all this time passed. They both got married to other people, and then they reconnected, and they were yes. you know like got back together with that highest level soulmate. And that was so sweet Aww. to me to hear their story. And it really shows you oh, love is possible so at any age. I agree. And I think love can be even stronger later in life. Yeah. So I hope she's able to. Oh, she will. i manifesting it. And I know it's possible. I can feel it for her. But also could use a little help from our listeners if you know anybody oh. <laughs> eligible. <laughs> It's putting it out there, putting it out there. So anyways, we are putting it out there for you, for all the people. We have the Meeting People IRL Masterclass. This is our first masterclass Mm -hmm. that we're doing and really excited by the amount of signups that we got for this masterclass. So we're super excited for you all to go through it and you know, manifest meeting people in real life. That's what it's all about. (laughs) Yeah, with the summer months coming so soon, this is like such a perfect time to get out there. And you don't have to meet your soulmate, but maybe now's a good time to start manifesting. I want to meet interesting people this summer. That's a great one to start with. Yeah. So you go to datablepodcast.com and you'll find it all there. And remember to use the code datable. Any other announcements? At Dateable Podcast. You can always find us there. Also, ratings and reviews. We are, again, I, we're so close <laughs> to that 1K on Apple. So help us get there. And then also on Spotify, we are starting to enable polls more. And there's ways to leave comments about your takeaways. Really want to encourage people that are Spotify listeners to participate because we can read some of these on air and just get the conversation started in different ways. Like we had a listener react very strongly to the episode that we did <laughs> with Ryan Van Duzer a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. And you know, Not you heard I, I did react to that in the quickie a week ago as well. So our goal with Dave was just to get the conversation going. And this is a way to do so. And you can also find us by you can contact us by emailing us hello at Dateable Podcast. Or if you see us out and about, oh, yes. you can come and say hi, like someone did with Julie. Oh my god, I almost forgot. I was so excited that this happened. I like immediately immediately texted UA, but there's this event 
in SF. I oh, I meant to get my costume, but I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this event in SF called Beta Breakers, and it's it's been one of my favorite events for years. I think it just like truly shows how freaking weird and fun the city can mm-hmm. be. It's like a running race, but everyone's in costume. And then there's all these spectators that go down and just walk and maybe party a little. The streets definitely had mm-hmm. some of those days. Everyone gets dressed up in costumes. because People in San Francisco love any excuse to be in costumes. Yes. There's also a shit ton of naked people. I don't know why that's like a thing. <laughs> that's a costume. <laughs> my partner and I went and he was like one naked guy five naked guys we got up to 13 naked dudes there's no women there's only naked dudes wow yeah, it's a thing wow <laughs> anyways where I'm going with this my partner and I were you know we we didn't really like go all in but he wasn't dressed at the moment but I was we- uh, dressed at the moment sounds like he was, <laughs> yeah, he was naked he was <laughs> that is number 14 I meant <laughs> I was like, as that came out, I was like, uh, not what I meant. But I, uh, all the naked guys were his friends. <laughs> and I was wearing, like, we we literally pulled together a costume in one second. We took Lay's and like Hawa- like these glasses that were like pineapples, uh-huh. and it was from an old costume, and just wore those down there. This was a uh-huh. last time game time decision. We're sitting at this restaurant. We're like off route a little, just getting like breakfast. And I'm wearing these like big pineapple glasses. <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear someone walk by. They're just like, love the podcast. And I was like, yes. And it was this really sweet girl Yay! that said that. I still don't know who you are. You didn't even like share your name, but I really appreciate it. It made my day. And I just love when people, you know. <laughs> I'm impressed that you recognize me also. That was the other thing. <laughs> that is really impressive because you're fully covered. I mean, your face is fully covered by those yeah. pineapples. <laughs> That's so great. Yes. If you are, if you happen to be listening right now, just, uh, you know, message us on Instagram so we know who you are and we can give you like an actual shout yeah. out. We love it, though. <laughs> Don't ever be afraid to come up to us. We absolutely love when you do it. You had someone recently at Lululemon. I had someone at Whole Foods yeah. not that long ago. No. I remember I was like just sitting outside this like cafe I go to often and this girl just came up and was like, I've listened to every episode. I'm from Toronto and I recently moved to San Francisco. And I'm like, oh. It was so sweet. You know, that's what I'm going to manifest for this summer. I want to manifest meeting more listeners. Yeah. And maybe male listeners, show your face. Yes. Yes. That's true. We've met a lot of, have we met? I mean, we definitely know male listeners from like organized meetups, but not necessarily in the wild sightings as much. Once. You had one. I was at my friend Trevor's birthday party. Okay. And... One of his friends, yes, it was a man, a guy, (laughs) uh, came over and said, I've been listening to the podcast for a while. Do you remember this? I had just moved to L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And he ended up doing, he owns like a window repair company. He ended up doing my windows (laughs) in my apartment. (laughs) Amazing. I'm sure there is someone that I'm just like forgetting that I have met like a guy. I, I know there is. It's just... It'll come to me. But there, we're going to meet more. We're just going to meet more of we're you We're going to meet more. Summer. We're manifesting it. So Yes, it's happening. Anyways, we are going to get into much more depth of how you can manifest whatever you want to manifest. But, you know, the love life that you want, that's ultimately a, why a lot of us are here. But before we do, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. Do you ever wish there was a way to warn people about your ex? Hmm, I sure wish for that. Or alert others about a creepy date or find out if your significant other is seeing someone else or just curious to know what's happening in your local dating scene. Date Detective makes it possible. Date Detective is a brand new app that just launched. They're on a mission to create a safer dating community through the power of information. The app lets you review your dates and share your dating experiences while maintaining your privacy. So how it works is that you post anonymously the information you want to share about your date, and that information is not made public. However, they make it easy to search for and find reviews about someone by using their name, email, phone number, or even their social media username. Date Detective also has community features like groups where you can connect with others or make your own private space with you and your friends. Investigate your next date on Date Detective. Download the app through date-detective.com. App. 
Ah, spring, a time for new beginnings. But you know what adds an extra spring to my step? Our partners at Via Hemp. Whether you want to get better sleep, ease anxiety, enhance your mood, or just get high, they have something for you, including their best selling high love gummy, which will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. A couple of weeks ago, I shared some of my gummies with my cleater, Lou, who we've also had as a guest on this podcast. Shout out to Lou. The first thing he said, to me when he came over today was if he could have more because they were that damn good. Personally, I've been liking their zero THC products. So whether you're a two milligram or a 50 milligram user, Via has something for you. So head to viahemp.com and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their award-winning gummies, 21 plus. That's V-I-I-A hemp.com and use the code DATABLE at checkout. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Spring is in the air and you know what adds an extra spring to my step? Our partners at Via Hemp. Need to chill out after a long day? There's a Via Gummy for that. Dealing with anxiety or stress? There's a Gummy for that too. Want to set the mood in the bedroom? There's a Gummy for that called High Love. Via also carries a wide array of other gummies with and without THC ranging from 0 to 100 milligrams. I've been struggling to stay focused lately, so I was excited to try out their Flow State gummies. These felt like a good bet to me too because they were non-psychoactive and THC free. But they definitely delivered food Boosting my daily energy and focus. So whether you're a two milligram or a 50 milligram user, you can shop through their website for any strength that affects. So head to Via Hemp and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their award-winning gummies, 21 plus. That's V-I-I-A hemp.com and use the code DATABLE at checkout. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Okay, let's hear from Erin all about manifesting your highest soulmate. Can you manifest love? And can you manifest really good love? That's a better question, right? Maybe you can manifest okay love, but can you manifest really good love? Our guest today is going to share her side on all of this of manifestation. And what does that mean? Erin Doppelt, author of Nothing Can Stop You, A Revolutionary Guide to Unleash Your Authentic Self, is here with us. The last time we had her on our show was in 2018. So it's been a minute. We had just met you at South by and had you on our show. I mean, that was like, Julie's first time at South by. That was like a different lifetime ago. And I still, I mean, that was like a good podcast. I connected with a lot of people. I got like clients through that. It was epic. That's why you're back. That's why we're having you. (laughs) Yay. Well, who is Erin? She is, other than someone awesome that we met at South by, she is a spiritual psychology and meditation teacher with her master's in psychology and education the spirituality mind body focus she's 32 years old splits her time between austin and chicago originally from chicago and she is married with a baby girl four month baby girl (laughs) such a trip so much has that's what you mean yes by a lifetime ago because last time we talked to you none of this had been manifested yet and here you are today (laughs) yes Yes. Like even what it took me to even show up for this call right now. Absolutely. Like the world is so different, but it's so fun to be present with both of you. A lot to dive into. We're so excited because, you know, in your book, you have a whole chapter dedicated to manifesting your highest soulmate. Mm. I'm curious, like what does highest soulmate mean to you? That is an incredible question. So there's a lot of different theologies that would suggest that they that we all have multiple soulmates. The way that I defined the highest possible soulmate is the one that you are going to bring life into the world with. So it's mm-hmm. usually the parent of your offspring. That is how I specifically identify highest possible. Mm. And did you manifest your current husband slash highest soulmate slash baby daddy? Yes. So I manifested everything. And I think manifestation is a term that we throw around. And so if that's something that doesn't resonate with listeners, just call it getting what you want, right? Just call it alignment. Just call it authenticity. Because the truth is, and I think this is so important for people to hear, 
when you deeply desire something, it's not random. And what does it look like to have the audacity to pursue what you most desire? It is woven into your soul. What you desire is unique to every single person. And I will always be a big champion for going for what you most desire. Because what I want is different than what you guys want. And that will always be true versus what my neighbors want. It's a roadmap for you to follow to pursue what I call your highest possible timeline, which is your most authentic self, your most authentic life. I love that you're breaking it down like this, because I think we definitely have the, you know, the subset of our listeners that are into all the woo woo stuff that we have maybe more of the practical people. And I think this does resonate with people that are more on that practical side. It's going after what you want. And when I looked up the definition of manifesting, it's imagining something will happen and consciously believing it that it will happen. And that's kind of what you touched upon. But is there anything more that you would say like in this, you know, practice of manifestation? There's so there I could talk about this for eons. So to ground it, manifestation is sitting in the feeling as if you already have it. It is literally moving throughout your day mm -hmm. and connecting to the feeling state of having everything you most desire. So would you say that majority of your listeners maybe they want to call in a soulmate? Is that yeah. does that feel true? Mm -hmm. Okay. So whoever is listening right now, I want you to sit in the feeling of listening to this podcast. And let's say you are calling in your highest romantic partner. And perhaps you are listening to this podcast while you are commuting and you are driving home from work. Sit in the feeling of walking into your front door and your beloved is already there mm. cooking a beautiful meal. And you just feel so taken care of this nourishing meal by this incredible being that is welcoming you in your own home. Or what does it feel like to be listening to this episode and then receive a text from your beloved saying, hey, just thinking of you, hope you're having a good day. Or what does it feel like to be listening to this episode and just knowing that you are about to embark on a fifth, sixth, seventh date with somebody you're super excited about, a relationship where you feel truly seen. Feeling states are very unique, right? So if I say to you, I want to feel loved, to me, that means drinking a hot cup of coffee in a European cafe next <laughs> to somebody smoking a hand-rolled cigarette where nobody really <laughs> knows who I am and I can dive deeply into a fantasy novel or journal about my dreams, right? That's what maybe it means to me. So start using metaphors to connect to what it feels like to have what you most desire. Is it like watching the sunset? Is it like an incredible night's sleep? Is it like free dessert at your favorite restaurant? You want to become more clear of what it actually feels like to have what you most desire. And then in your day-to-day -day life, you pay attention to when you are connected to that feeling. Mm. So, you know, waking up and having my morning cup of coffee in silence, that kind of feels like what I'm calling in for myself. Mm. Or that nourishing conversation I had with a girlfriend, that kind of feels like what I'm calling in for myself. I can also go into very specific techniques, if you think. Oh, yeah, we definitely want to go there. <laughs> I want to just pause there for anybody who's not familiar with manifestation, especially myself, asking for me. <laughs> when you, I feel like when you manifest, you're basing these feelings on what you already know. But what if you want to manifest something that you don't know? Like, I don't know what it's like to have $10 million. I would love to manifest that. But how do I live in that feeling? Same with how do I know what it's like to be with my highest soulmate? I don't know. Maybe I haven't met this person yet. So how do I even manifest something I'm not consciously aware of? That's an incredible question. There's a powerful manifestation mantra that goes, why not me? Hmm. Why not me? And in this world of incredible technology, or even I'll ground it a little bit more. I have a best girlfriend who dated a lot and she wanted to call in her highest romantic partner. And something we would say, I would say to her is, look at all these people around you. Look at me, like look at your siblings, look at your best friends. They also dated a lot and now they're in this incredible relationship. It is one degree separated from you. So why not you? Why not me? $10 million, if you go on social media, I'm sure you can find somebody who lives this incredibly abundant lifestyle and has manifested or works and has generated $10 million, you can look at this person and see that they exist in the world. And you can just say the mantra, why not me? I know this exists at this moment in time on this planet earth. I know it's possible. So why can't I be somebody 
to access that. You always seek information from your real life experience all around you. Another one that I'll add in here that's also really powerful, and this is a big one if so many of us are unclear, right? We have decision fatigue, we're maybe disconnected from our most authentic self, which is incredibly common, whether you are single or in a relationship, we lose ourselves in our life sometimes, it happens often. And we'll pause and we'll ask ourselves, what do I even desire? Like, what what do I even want, right? And we don't have clarity around our deepest desires and dreams. Start working with a manifestation mantra. I'll have some of that. So when you are going out in the world and you see somebody eating like a beautiful meal and they're just so happy and content and you desire that for self, just say, I'll have some of that. If you see a couple holding hands at Mm. a stop sign before they cross the street and maybe they share a kiss and it looks warm and gentle and loving and you desire that for self, say, I'll have some of that. If you're listening to me on this episode and I'm with my beloved, I have a four month old baby. I have my book coming out in May. And any of this resonates with you, just say, I'll have some of that. And you are calling in that energy, that clarifying tool into your life. I think what I'm taking away is you don't have to have it all figured out either for manifestation. It's kind of like a starting ground. Like I actually did this without realizing I was manifesting (laughs) for the non woo woo people. Like I remember I read this book and this was after a breakup. I went to Calistoga, which is my happy place with hot springs. And I was reading this book and it was basically like kind of what you were saying of the, I'll have some of that. It was thinking about like your friends or people in your life and what do you admire in their relationship and taking a little from each person. And then also thinking about these like milestones that we all have, like your birthday or a holiday and more of these like generic things that are really easy to grasp around and thinking about like, what do I actually want? And like, I remember being like, I want that person that, you know, is so excited about my birthday and plans the big thing. And my partner before wasn't that. And then like now I'm like, oh, I have that. So I think I'd love your take on this on other techniques, but I think it was helpful for me to take something that didn't feel so like I need to be pie in the sky and thinking about it just the every day more. Julie, I'm so happy for you. (laughs) I manifested. I didn't even know. (laughs) Yes, she did. (laughs) It's such a win for all of us. Every woman in a healthy relationship, it has a huge ripple effect. It's the highest good. It's a win for all of us. So what other techniques are there then? Oh my God. So first, like just, I think for anyone who's listening, this is a huge rabbit hole. You could start with Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I think a lot of people like because he is a doctor. He has a lot of clinical research to support the practices. He believes that you can essentially just call in everything you most desire by just connecting to energy in a different way. We can even go much deeper. We could talk about Neville Goddard, who was a mystic in the 1960s. He wrote the book, The Law and the Promise. You can actually find it for free online. Just Google The Law and the Promise. And Goddard would talk about the eavesdropping method where think about what you desire. So let's say, for example, you want a promotion. You want to think about your two coworkers, maybe your boss and one of your coworkers, and you are going to picture yourself eavesdropping on a conversation Hmm. where they are talking about how epic you are. Like you are amazing and you are about to get a promotion and it is going to be a hundred extra thousand dollars and it's going to be increased flexibility and vacation days. You are going to feel yourself eavesdropping on this conversation. That's one of Goddard's manifestation techniques. My point in bringing this up, the route to work with manifestation is to see what resonates and then go from there. Find the techniques that feel in alignment for you. I educate on snapshot manifestation. We might have even talked about this uh, on our last episode together, but it is picturing a specific event that is going to occur in a year, in six Mm -hmm. months or a year and a half from now. The event is going to happen no matter what. So it needs to be something that is going to truly like, it's not hypothetical. It's like my cousin's wedding. Like it's going to happen no matter what. And you sit in the feeling of having everything you desire at this event. Mm. Now, the Mm. thing with manifestation, and this is the most important part is you have to take aligned action. So if in your vision, you are in a beautiful relationship, but today in like the modern day today, you are not dating. You are not asking for introductions. You are not going to networking events. 
how are you going to right. invite this relationship into your life? Yeah, you can't just sit mm. on your couch. So is the right. example I gave about like thinking about your birthday or a holiday, is that snapshot manifestation? Yeah. So the way that you would work with, let's say your birthday, you want to make it a bit more concrete. Like, do you always host a, a party on your birthday? If so, then you can use your birthday as your snapshot manifestation. Mm. And you want to dive much deeper. It's like you invite your nosy aunt and your aunt is like, oh my God, Julie, look at this incredible person that you brought to your party. <laughs> Tell me everything about him. What's okay. it like? Where'd you meet him? And you respond. And then maybe he like walks over during this conversation and he puts his hand around your shoulder and you feel comfort and grounded. And like that feeling that you had when you read that really good book that only makes sense to you. It doesn't make sense to everybody else. And maybe you get cold and you put on his jacket and it's like warm and cozy and big and it fits you perfectly. This is the different route to talk about manifestation because all of us, I'll say even women especially, we know what we want. And it's easier to ground it with feeling as opposed to saying he's 5'11", he has a beard. He uh, has a job that is flexible, but makes a lot of money. You know, like you want to make it more rooted in feeling states mm -hmm. because then you can go out into the world and recognize when you are connected to that feeling. I like how descriptive you got. <laughs> in finding your husband, was there a technique that worked for you? Yeah. So I dive into this really deeply in Snapshot Manifestation. I moved into a very deep ceremony where I called in my ancestors. I think it's so important to always know that you are being guided. And I think it's also important to add that all the relationships until you met your beloved are incredibly important, right? So even the relationships that were out of alignment, even the relationships that were good, even the relationships that sucked, mm -hmm. right? They all prepared you to be with your highest possible soulmate. I also want to add for anyone who's listening that once you know, you can never unknow. So this is for the person who is in a relationship and you like kind of know that this isn't your highest possible soulmate. Mm. So I add that in there because it's easier to leave a shitty relationship, right? A relationship where you don't feel right. seen. It is so much harder to leave a loving relationship. I would even say a healthy relationship. It is so much harder to leave that knowing that there is something of more alignment, of more of highest good, of more connection to God as you understand it. So once you know, you can never unknow. And I'll, I'll leave that there for a bunch of people. But for me, I think snapshot manifestation is one of the greatest practices. It's also my personal practice. You can call in multiple desires at once, but it's a really, really good one for calling in your highest possible soulmate as well. I think like hearing you, I was in like maybe beginner 101 and it goes a lot more <laughs> deep. There's so much to unpack with what you just said. I want to maybe start actually with what you were just saying about like, how do you know that there's something better out there for you? Because I could see that being challenging for people of, am I just self-sabotaging something good? Or how do I trust myself? Like, how do you break that down and then want to get into your story more? We always know, and it's so easy to ignore the call by watching Netflix or having that 5 p.m. glass of wine or eating something or scrolling on social. We always know. It doesn't matter how good the sex is. It doesn't matter if maybe there's an extra layer of abundance in the relationship and you feel taken care of. It doesn't matter if it's like you live in the same city or you have the same religion. If you feel as though that you are going to outgrow this relationship or that the person you are currently with can't quote unquote, keep up with you, then you have the responsibility to yourself and your future legacy, like your future offspring, whether it's a dog or it's multiple children and your children's children to do the deep work. It always starts with heal thyself, right? Heal thyself and you'll attract the highest possible soulmate. It's going to come to you in the middle of the night Right. So I know for me, it was if do you guys remember the song, say something, I'm giving up on you. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. be the one if you want me to just Google it. If anyone's like, I don't know, just Google that song, listen to it and just see if you cry. It's such a powerful song. Like I've talked to women who are like, I got divorced because of that song. <laughs> like I just listened to that song and I was like, I need out. And that's because it's feeling states, right? You listen mm. to something, you experience a feeling. 
and then you take action from that place. So I'll say most often the reason to leave a relationship, even if it's good, is if you feel like the person you are with won't grow with you or keep up with you. Did you have that feeling ever that you were like, I'm with someone and it's not right? Yes. Oh my God. And, I, and again, I talk about this in my book. And I think I think it's important to talk about because personal stories from people going out, like my personal story, and I'm going out into the world and sharing these practices and doing the deep work and hope of inspiring others. I had this really wonderful boyfriend. We met while studying abroad in Florence, Italy. We were together on and off for five years. We have a very close group of friends of eight people and we see each other for reunions and now for weddings. And it was a really healthy relationship born from super close friendship and a shared experience, right? We spent four months living in Florence, Italy. We were together every single day for four months. It was so transformational. We were 20, 21 years old. And I think we grew up a lot together. And so a lot of my story for listeners, and I know we probably talked about this in our 2018 podcast, but I spent my 20s living in Israel, India, across Asia and Europe, and we would date, I would date him. And then I would go in Israel. I, we, would like, I, we would break up and I'd go live in Israel and I'd come back home and we'd get back together. Then we'd break up and I'd go live in India and I would come home and we would get back together. And then I would go to Bali and Jordan and Prague and we'd break up. And whenever I came home, we always got back together because it was comfortable and it was loving. And I think the most radical act we can do is to show up for the miracle. And showing up for the miracle means making space. And making space means breaking up. It means quitting the job. It means moving cities. Mm -hmm. It means moving back home into your parents' house. For anyone listening, I've moved back into my parents' house like six or seven times. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I are thinking about doing it again. <laughs> so it's an open invitation. So, I mean, I've definitely had this feeling, like I recently left my job and I had this feeling like this isn't what's meant for me, but I've never had it with like a partner. I guess like for you, now that you're, with someone that's your highest soulmate. Tell us how that kind of got off the ground. Like, did you know immediately? Did that still take time and understanding? Like, how did you know? Yeah, I knew immediately. He walked in and was my ceremony. And that's why feeling states are so life altering. Because feeling states will never lie to you. If it feels like what you're calling in, then this is the thing. So even on our first date, John walked in and it felt like my ceremony. And we moved in together a couple weeks later. We backpacked Asia together a couple months later. We got engaged after a year and a couple months. We would have gotten married, but then COVID hit. Like we would have gotten married like two years after meeting. So yes, I do think that when you're practicing these practices and you are clear on feeling states, you are going to know when you are with the highest person for you. So, I mean, I love that story, obviously, that it's so quick, but I think this is can be problematic for people, too, to hear stuff like this, because you're like, if mine isn't like this, does that mean I'm not with my highest soulmate? What would you say to that? Yeah, so I this is like with the asterisks of like hoping that you're doing the deep work and you're on the path of healing, you're on the self-development or spiritual path, whatever way feels you know most authentic to say it. If you are happy in your own energy and also inviting in someone else that is going to grow with you, then the timeline doesn't like I wanted that timeline. I wanted to get married and travel the world and then have a baby and birth a book. That was the timeline I wanted. Not everybody wants that timeline. I have a lot of friends who have been dating, especially my friends that are not American because it's so American to get married and have kids. And there's other cultures where it's not even essential to necessarily get married, but just be in partnership for an extremely long time. Like my Israeli friends, they'll just date forever. And then after kind of 10 years of dating, they just call each other husband and wife. <laughs> and that's just like how it is. So I think it's first determining what is the timeline that you most desire. And you have to be radically honest in talking about timelines. And just another tangent here is I think so many women think that they have a shorter timeline because of fertility. However, that's also relative. There's a lot of research that if you eat well and you live a balanced lifestyle, which means minimal stress and like outside pollutants, that you can definitely increase your fertility window to much later years. So I hope some women can relax into that. 
And also, you have no idea how your babies are going to find you, right? I think sometimes it is through the traditional sense of birthing your babies out into the world. Sometimes it is adoption. Sometimes it is surrogacy. Sometimes it is foster. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like these people that come into your lives, these kids that come into your lives in such a miraculous way. So you had this line in your book that was like a manifestation of, I trust the timing in my life or mantra you used. Like, why is that so important? Because so many of us have anxiety, really, like a lot of us have such anxiety and we try to control so many of these practices and you can control how often you're showing up for a first date or how often you are asking for an introduction. If you are dating, like you can control staying or leaving in a relationship, like that is always going to be your responsibility to take action on that. However, when it comes to like just releasing the expectations, sometimes we think we're ready but there's deeper work that we need to heal or there's other milestones that we need to show up for before this thing comes into the world. Like for me, I really wanted my book to come into the world and like be a grounded, established thing. And then getting pregnant and having Eden was going to feel more in alignment for me. So if you notice yourself manically manifesting, aggressively pushing for a very specific outcome, Work with the mantra, I trust the timing of my life, set it as an alarm in your phone, let it go off every couple hours Mm -hmm. to kind of just keep you anchored in. Mm, That's a really good piece of advice. What about people who feel like they're not deserving? I can hear many people say, well, that sounds greedy. That sounds selfish to ask for this. (laughs) How do people get up to speed with feeling deserving of it? You, I thank you again for like these questions are so hot. Worthiness is like the biggest obstacle, truly. It's why we self-sabotage. It's why we say we're going to show up for a first date and then cancel last minute. It's why we cheat, right? Or like embezzle money. I don't know. It's like we do crazy shit. (laughs) We do a lot of things. And it's because we don't feel inherently worthy. And the thing that I like to say to my community and my clients, my students moving through this is, and this is truly the first thing, and I know this may not resonate with everyone, but you really are a child of divine. Like you are a child of God as you understand it. So that's it. Like that's the bottom line. You are inherently worthy because you are. Like you are here. You exist. You are worthy. And I hope some people can relax into that. (laughs) If not, something that I like to say is to look for evidence. And this will appeal to my logical community. Look for evidence in your life where maybe somebody came to you where they were struggling and you helped them feel better or help them solve a problem. Like look at your life for when you felt this feeling state of worthiness. It is a slippery slope. So just like kind of be gentle there when you're looking for quote unquote evidence. And then the other thing I like to share is when we're talking about worthiness, we have this idea that someone else is worthier. Like what Mm -hmm. makes somebody worthy to have that, but not you to have that thing that you most desire. And I invite you to really question that. We have people in our lives that maybe they seem like they have like a more fabulous life. What makes them more worthy to have that thing as opposed to you? And if you are seeing that out in your world, you are one degree separated. So work with a mantra. Why not me? Call that in for yourself. So those are three things that I would hone in on and take some time with. I want to dive into this even more. But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear from our partners. Summer is basically here and your wardrobe needs an upgrade, right? Instead of a flimsy fast fashion haul, which I used to be guilty of, now spend your money wisely on high quality essentials that will last beyond the season. Quince is my spot for quiet luxury without paying luxury prices. They offer a range of must-have items like 100% European linen under $50, 14 karat gold jewelry from $30, and my most favorite recent purchase was a pair of comfy high quality biker shorts that cost about half of what I would normally pay. I know you're wondering how they do it. Quinn's partners directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to you. And they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes. So I can feel good about getting high quality items that last longer. Upgrade your closet this summer with Quince. Right now, go to quince.com slash datable to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash datable. 
I admit I've been late to the party for having a skincare routine, but I'm now on board. I'm absolutely obsessed with Osea's cleansers and serums and their mission of clean skin in body care products. Every night before bed, I've been using their algae body oil. It leaves my skin feeling silky soft and unbelievably glowing. I love that it's rich yet never greasy and clinically proven to instantly improve skin elasticity. And it visibly firms and makes my skin feel more sculpted and toned. I also love that Osea is women founded and led and has made clean, clinically proven seaweed infused skincare for over 28 years. So what are you waiting for? Get healthy, glowing skin for summer with clean, vegan skin and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. With summer right around the corner, it's such a perfect time to get out there and meet people. But we also know how challenging it is to meet people in real life. I mean, how do people do this before cell phones and dating apps, right? Well, we want to demystify that for you and remove any anxiety around meeting people in the wild. And that's why we've created a masterclass on this very topic. We've gathered some best practices in a comprehensive plan that will help you appear more approachable, have more confidence around strangers, and be strategic around where and when to meet people while not compromising your interests or who you are. And for Datable listeners, we're giving you a special $10 off discount with the code DATABLE. Just head to datablepodcast.com and go to programs. And don't forget to use the code DATABLE for $10 off. The link and code are also in our show notes, or you can always DM us on Instagram if you have any questions. We're only offering this until June 5th. So sign up while you can. I want to go back to your story a little, because like you talk about in your book how like, your mom introduced you to your now husband and you were kind of skeptical at first. You were like, my mom doesn't know what's right for me. You know, he's too young or he's from my hometown, doesn't get me. But then clearly you said like, as soon as you met him, you knew, or as soon as you started dating, like what was the, how'd you get there? I guess from that. We believe we know better than God. We believe we know better than the divine. and. So often we, (laughs) it is so important to pay attention to what's occurring naturally. So if you have that one aunt, that's like, you need to go connect with this person over coffee. And she brings it up multiple times. And you're like, no, no, like, I'm not going to do that. Like, you're my weird aunt. Like, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) However, you have a responsibility to pay attention to what's occurring naturally. And it's, it's a bit more gentler than that too. It could be like, why do I love going to this one yoga class with this one teacher? Mm. And then you notice that like the same other person always goes to that one yoga class with that one teacher. Also, you have to pay attention to what's occurring naturally. Mm. For me, my mom's cool. Like my mom's lovely. We're very, 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 very extremely deeply close. And she really wouldn't just say that unless it felt immensely true. And I have a responsibility to pay attention to what's occurring naturally. And this was something, what is meant for you will always find you. So it's okay if you resist it in the beginning and also like trust the timing of your life because John and I could have only met at that moment. It would have never worked out if we met out at any other time. And I think that's important. That's why. You have to trust the timing of your life and relax into it, into that. So you also need to get over yourself. (laughs) Like I have to get over myself. Like we have like big egos and we think we're too good for a situation or not good enough Mm -hmm. for a situation. And who am I to have this relationship? And we have to struggle with worthiness. So let yourself struggle, do the needed work, like be on the path of self-development, spirituality and healing, whatever verbiage resonates. And I just want to add like an extra thing here is I talk about my relationship with John because it's the greatest teacher in my life. I'm so grateful that I have this relationship and we're still two human beings. Like right now, Eden is in this, I have a four month old baby and she's in this sleep regression, which is something I knew nothing about, by the way. Like I didn't know that you need to teach your baby how to sleep. I think being a mom has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole entire life. And I've lived in silent ashrams. I've like... (laughs) I've like done hard shit and I'll find myself bickering with my beautiful, amazing divine husband Mm. about, you know, we're exhausted Mm. and I have to work and he has to work and navigating this new system, our new, our new timeline, our new life right now. So I add that in because I don't want you to listen to me and think, oh, her life is so perfect. It's not, it's, it's very real. And I'll always be authentic in that. 
you're allowed to have high moments and you're allowed to have hard moments. And that is, that's like our greatest joy in our human experience. So try to not compare. And like, we all go to the bathroom first thing in the morning, like just bring the humanness back into it. Wait, but going back to meeting your husband, at what point did you stop resisting and then start relaxing into it? Yeah. So the loose story goes, my mom brought this up in like October, 2016, before I moved to India. And my reaction was like, mom, I'm moving to India. You don't (laughs) understand me. You know, no one supported me in moving to India, but why would they? My parents are from Chicago. They had no concept of India. They like still don't. And that's absolutely okay. That's not the journey that they're on. Yeah. And then years keep going by and I keep getting back together with the boyfriend that I talked Mm -hmm. about earlier because he's such a good guy and we're still friends. And that's a whole nother thing about staying friends with your ex Mm -hmm. because I I might be the only one. (laughs) Uh, I don't know a lot of people that do. And uh, it kept coming up naturally. So I went to Rosh Hashanah services, which is the Jewish New Year. And I'm very good family friends with my now my in-laws. I see them at synagogue. I grew up knowing them. We both have, my husband, John, has an older brother, Matthew, and I have an older brother, Matthew, and they grew up together. Mm. This is like our little town outside of Chicago or like Jewish shtetl. And I go to Rosh Hashanah services and I like say happy new year to my husband's mother. And she says, just so you know, John is single. (laughs) Like, And it was a sentiment that obviously my mom shared years earlier. And I was dating somebody at the time. This was the first time I was dating. This was the first and thank God, like only time where I dated somebody that wasn't, that didn't really see me, that didn't invite me in. It it was like wintertime in Chicago. I didn't want to be single Mm. at that moment. I was back living in my parents' house. He had an apartment in the city. Mm -hmm. Like there were all these like little things where I was like, I'm going to try to make this work. It started off so strong and then it was dwindling. So I was in a relationship that I knew. I literally said to myself, if this relationship doesn't get better by Thanksgiving, I'm leaving it. And I dated this guy for a couple of weeks. Like I think we were together for two months. It was very short lived because he didn't truly see me. He didn't invite me in. He didn't make space for me in his life. And I think when we keep receiving these winks from the universe, you do, even if you're not sure about it, you do have to take a little bit of aligned action. And I sent John a Facebook friend request. And like, that's it. This was 2017. You didn't poke October, him? November, 2017. <laughs> no, poking, I think poking stopped in like 2017. They're bringing it back. Control. Right? They They're are. bringing it back. They yes. bring it back. It's, it was in the news today. Theaters rejoice. Right. Yeah. Because I wasn't sure. I didn't know he was younger yeah. than me. He was from my hometown. Like, And so I Facebook friended him and he messaged me. And then I obviously broke up with that guy and we went out December 1st. Wow. I mean, it's such a good story. I guess like the part I'm still trying to understand, though, is like, how did you know? Like, how did you feel that that this was different? Because like clearly some of it probably came down to just knowing yourself in manifestation. But what like advice would you have for someone that's like in this position that's like, I don't know if this is the right person for me. I'm still trying to get to know them because we also say that sometimes it does take time to get to know someone and see if they're the right fit for you. You have to know yourself. And that's everyone's responsibility is to do the work. Why are you the way you are? Why do you even want to be in this relationship to begin with? Do you see yourself with this person for the next 60, 70 years? Really? Like ask the hard questions. When you ask those hard questions, honor your inner child. So the seven, eight, nine-year-old version of you, maybe even honor like who you were in college at the same space. And then I want you to honor your 85-year-old version of self at the same time. And you need to get quiet. And we are afraid to ask the hard questions because we don't know what we're going to see on the other end. However, it's the holiest work of all. It's the deepest work of all. And it's we have the responsibility to do that if you want to like heal your lineage, if you want to live on your highest possible timeline, if you want to live your most authentic life. When you know who you are, and I've said this before, but when you know who you are, you become dangerous. You're not easily manipulated. You don't fall for bullshit. Yeah. You have high level female and, and male relationships. I mean, like platonically and romantically. And in this power, you're going to live a different life, Right. So when you are radically honest with who you are and what you want out of this human experience, you are going to attract a relationship 
and this is the criteria, do you get to be your fullest expression Mm -hmm. of self Mm -hmm. in that romantic relationship? Can you be the rawest version of you, the version of you that maybe you don't even like to be so often? I woke my husband up in the middle of the night last night because I was so in this, thank God, it hasn't happened to me in so long, but my baby isn't sleeping. I'm not sleeping. It was 3 a.m. or it was 2 a.m. and I was still awake and I was getting so anxious. And I, I woke up John and I was like, I'm so anxious. I haven't fallen asleep yet. She's going to wake up soon. Mm. I have this podcast tomorrow. I mean, like I have a, I have a day tomorrow where I need to be myself and I know myself. And I know this is true for so many people. If I go too many days without sleeping, I'm not well. Yeah. Right. And I think that's common for most people. And I woke up my husband and I was like crying and like, really, this just happened last night. And he just held me. And that's what you need. You need somebody where your inner child is going to feel safe, but you can grow into the person that you deeply desire to be at the same time. And he held me and we co-regulated together because you always regulate your nervous system when you're Mm -hmm. in a really comfortable hug, especially with somebody who loves you. And then I rolled onto my side and I fell asleep for a whole hour. (laughs) I know this sounds silly, but like it was so life-giving. And then Eden woke up and I like missed her so much and she's so cute. And that's what it means to be truly seen in a relationship, but it requires you to sit with yourself ask the hard questions, ask your mother and father, like, and your grandparents about their relationships, who they were than when they entered them. I mean, for so many of us, our parents and grandparents were like 18 (laughs) to like, we're young, right? They were like children. Mm. And you can learn from that as well. And what was it about him in your first initial meetings with him that you just knew? What was that feeling that you were feeling? He double texted me. (laughs) What does that mean? (laughs) Like, I talk, I talk to my clients all the time and they'll be like, I texted him a couple days went by. I didn't hear back. And then he finally replied and it was four days later. And I replied, you know, I took two days to then respond. And it's like, there was no guessing. I knew he was thinking about me. Mm -hmm. He would message me. We went out on December 1st. We went on a date every day for 21 days. And then I was leading a trip, a, a retreat to the other side of the world. And he called me every day and checked in and I think just the wanting to know me, the wanting to be present with me. I talk about love languages in my certification. I have a year-long certification where I certify people to become certified meditation teachers and spiritual psychology coaches. Mm -hmm. And it's all, everything I share is Eastern ritual and Western psychology. And there's a lot to speak about when it relates to the love languages. I'm sure you've had this on your podcast before. There's a sixth love language that people don't talk about, which is the love of being truly seen for who you are. Mm. And John just wanted to be with me. He reached out, he made really cute date outings, but it gets to be really small of a text of like, I'm thinking of you. Like, what are you up to? What are you doing? Oh my God, I like read this really interesting book or I saw this cool yoga studio, let's go together. It's just the art of being seen. You know, it's so interesting because like, I I mean, I I love that there's a six love language for that because I think that really is what it comes down to. The part that I would love your thoughts on, because I'm like trying to think about my own experiences because I felt a lot of the similar things with my current partner. But I also had people that were also showing up that way in the past. Like you also had the other relationship that was good, but it still wasn't like the person. Like, what is the difference? Like, what is that you know, the middle piece or the missing piece that separates, you know, someone that's doing all the right things? Is it that they just don't fully see and hear you? Like, what is that? This is when I like to talk about spirit babies. For anybody that is calling in children with your romantic partner, I highly recommend connecting with your spirit babies and seeing and just like asking them, like, is this the person you want to be your other parent? Mm. Like, is this the person I will bring you into the world with? And that requires ceremony and relaxed nervous system and gentle breathing. And I have an exercise on this in my book as well. So that's one thing that you can do. And again, and I know I mentioned this before, it's like the healed person will know. I find it so important. Like so often we'll go to a therapist, a coach, a mentor, a friend and ask their wisdom and ask their advice. But there is nothing like truly knowing thyself and being able to source from your own wisdom. I call this your inner guru. 
your inner teacher and leaning in to knowing and trusting and having assurance Mm -hmm. that you will know you are going to know because you are honest with yourself. That may require a week without social media. That may require a month without alcohol. That may require, honestly, like detoxing your diet and eating only real whole foods. That's important. If you are inviting in a lot of things that are clogging your liver or clogging your sex hormones or clogging your judgment, drugs and alcohol, then yeah, you're going to make a different decision. But give yourself time to detox from these other areas in your life, which is going to lead to clarity. Mm, a mental detox. A mental detox. Yeah. I talk, I think silence is really important as well. Even if it's just from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., taking time to not be on screens is very important. You have to remember that like everything is a programming. So even if you're watching The Bachelor, which like, oh my God, this is the best season I think there's ever been. (laughs) I love Joey. I think he's a really good, authentic guy, but you have to take time away from the programming around you. And that means social media and like the news and what you're reading, because that's going to program you to have very specific thoughts. And you need to take time to have original thought, which is a dying art. We never have original thought anymore. It sounds like these are the aligned actions you need to take to manifest. Something else you did was you showed up on your first date in a very different attire than most people (laughs) show up on first date. Felt like an aligned action for you. What was that? I taught a meditation workshop at a yoga studio in the suburbs. I had this date. John and I met at like eight. I told him it was BYOB. It wasn't. I don't know. I like, and I met, I keep messing that up thinking that this Thai restaurant, which is like my favorite restaurant is BYOB. And John's never been there before on that first date. And I showed up in my yoga clothes. Like I was like a little sweaty, (laughs) but like I was in Lululemon's yoga attire. And it was so important for me because I just, I showed up in my meditation, like in the essence of my meditation still. I just came from a workshop where I guided a lot of people to feel better. So I felt better. I drove into the city after rush hour. I showed up to a restaurant that I knew at the very least, and this is what I always recommend to people who are tired of dating, at least go to a restaurant where you know you can get a good meal. Like I kind of knew at the very least I was going to have a good meal. And I always, I love right now on social media, we'll say like, show up for the plot, like show up for the plot, Mm. like just see what happens. This allows you to make room for the miracle and uh, it makes you a good storyteller, like allow your life to be interesting. So take the aligned action, show up, do what you need to do to show up in your most authentic form. I have a lot of clients that like won't show up. Uh, unless they have a full face of makeup or like their lucky lingerie set or like things like that. Do that if that's going to help you feel confident and embody the version of yourself that is in this loving partnership. However, always come rooted into what authenticity feels like for you. Yeah. I mean, with all of this, like clearly, you know, love is a big focus of it. Your book's all about like creating a fulfilling life for yourself. Why do you think that manifesting love is such like a pivotal part of that whole equation. It's what we want. You've like, what are we here to do? We are here to procreate, whether you like that or not, right? We are here to be in partnership with our tribe and to bring life into the world. We are here to connect to the earth and grow vegetables and to farm high quality meat and dairy. Whether you like that or not, that's like, that's it. It's not, we're spirits in human meat suits. Sometimes we just need to ground it like that on this like floating ball in a galaxy with zillions of other stars. We need to remember that when we're feeling sad and anxious to come back into our bodies. So my book is about doing the thing, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So many people want to write books. So many people want to launch podcasts. So many people want to be entrepreneurs and work for themselves, travel the world have children, not have children, like do whatever they want to do. My book is a permission slip to go live your highest possible timeline, to go do the thing. And that's going to look different for every single person. So my whole book is about, this is just one chapter about manifesting your highest possible soulmate, which is synonymous to other things that you desire to call in. But it's a lot about the science of happiness and the science of nourishment. It's about recognizing false gurus and sourcing the wisdom of yourself. I keep talking about how when you truly know thyself, you are going to attract and know that you're in the right relationship. My book will guide you on how to truly know thyself. 
So that's essentially what it's about. And I like to say, you know, my background is clinical psychology. I appeal to the left and right side of the brain. So the logical and the woo-woo, find what resonates and just leave what doesn't and move forth on that path. Love that. And then just while we're on the topic, let's just make this very practical for people. How does someone make snapshot manifestation a daily practice? What is something they can do right now as a beginner? Snapshot manifestation. Oh my God. I have a podcast as well on the Wise Woman podcast where I go into this in detail and obviously in the book. Snapshot manifestation, picture an event that is going to occur six months to a year and a half from now. Everything that you most desire is occurring at that event. Picture yourself with your beloved, hone in on that feeling state. Maybe you check your phone and you see that your blog went viral or you have an email from your boss saying that you did so well on your project and you're getting a promotion. Maybe somebody compliments your outfit and you're like, thank you, I got this on my recent trip to Portugal, like you're manifesting travel and a whimsical life. And then come back into the real world and ask yourself, where does course correction need to shift? Maybe in your snapshot manifestation, you were in a healthy headspace. Now's a really good time to meditate. Maybe in your snapshot manifestation, you were an author. Now's a good time to sit down and write the book, right? And then take aligned action. I teach this as a way, I call it soul time. Soul time is a non-negotiable amount of time. It is between you and God as you understand it. It is bearing your heart to the heavens and saying, I am taking up space in my life. I am an active participant in my own life. Soul time, you do it every day. I recommend small increments of time, like 18 minutes or less, 10 minutes of meditating, 10 minutes of writing, 10 minutes of going for a walk and getting your steps in, 10 minutes of showing up on the dating apps and swiping through, 10 minutes of asking for introductions. And then every day for about a minute, connect to the feeling of your ceremony. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think this is such a great start of takeaways, but it's you know, it's believing it, but also taking action. It can't just be that you're, you know, dreaming all day. Like it has to be the correlation between the two. Absolutely. I think the other big takeaway I had is like, we hear a lot about like soulmates and like how soulmates are different than life partners. But what I'm hearing from you is like the highest soulmate is that person that can be your life partner. And whatever you want to call it terminology, you're really just finding that right person for you. And ultimately, the only way to do that is to, one, believe it's out there, believe you are worthy, do the manifestations or the visualizations or whatever you want to call it to actually hone in on it. Because I agree, I'm a huge believer of like what you put energy into will usually find you. And what words you use and how you talk about things, like if you're always talking about how dating is the worst, then dating is going to be the worst. But if you actually are reframing that and putting that out there and focusing, then yeah, inevitably it will come for you. And I guess the third like major takeaway, this trust in your timing, this is something we've talked about on this podcast a lot. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in all the timelines and stay with the wrong people because you're afraid of, you know, what else is out there. And I think just having that confidence, like again, easier said than done, but that probably goes with just understanding yourself and what it is that you want out of life, ultimately. Beautiful summary, Julie. Absolutely. Love it. Two major takeaways. One is manifestation is in the realm of possibility if it's already in your realm of consciousness. Yes. So what you've described here, Erin, is people think, well, that's impossible. Well, if you already thought of it, right? if it's already something that it's in your consciousness, it is possible. So I love how powerful that message is. And two is, I feel like when you manifest, it's like a handshake with the universe. You say, universe, you keep up your end of the bargain as long as I keep up my end of the bargain, which is the aligned actions. I am doing everything I can within my control to get to what I want. And your job, universe, is to deliver what I'm asking for when it's the right time for me. So that's a great separation. What's in my control and what's not in my control. And once you make that handshake contract with the universe, just let the universe do its work. Beautiful. Absolutely. Those are incredibly powerful takeaways. And that's a way to digest everything that we talked about. Yeah. And one of the major questions we wanted to answer through this is like, do you think you can manifest love? And 
I'd love both of your takes, but I mean, I really do believe like putting out there what you're looking for. And I wish I knew some of these techniques. And actually, I shouldn't even say I wish I can still use these techniques in further yes. parts of life of going deeper and really getting visual of what it is. I think there's something very powerful of putting that out into the universe. Yes, you can manifest love at the core. And both of you just touched on this as well. At the core, what you focus on grows. If you focus on the anxieties, the stressors, the traumas in your past or your life, that is going to expand. If you focus on the loving relationship you have with a close friend, a pet, a grandparent, that is going to expand as well. The more positive experiences you add up, the more miraculous life will be. Absolutely. Can you manifest love? 1,100% yes, of course. And I think that's so important for listeners to know. Agreed. You can definitely manifest love. First, you got to know what is that love? What does that feel like? And then seek it out. I really think that is yeah. that is how it works sometimes. If people want to find out more about you, Erin, I know your book comes out May 7th, you said. Yeah. Where can they find all that info? You can hang out with me on Instagram at Erin R. Doppelt, E-R-I-N-R-D-O-P-P-E-L-T. That's really the best way to connect with me. My book, Nothing Can Stop You, comes out May 6th or May 7th. I think Amazon ships it on May 7th, but the book comes out May 6th. And please pre-order for like for anyone who's listening, pre-orders are huge. Yes. Uh, every publisher like Amazon buys 10 times as many pre-orders. So mm. it just really changes the game for authors. And I would so deeply appreciate that. I have a huge event that is coming up virtually for anyone that pre-orders the book. So make sure to DM me on Instagram to learn about that or follow me there. And my website is erinrachel.pelt.com. E-R-I-N-R-A-C-H-E-L-D-O-P-P-E-L-T.com. And I'm so happy to be present with both of you. There's like so much to explore. I'm best known for my year-long certification where you can become a certified meditation teacher and spiritual psychology coach. But yes, the book is something I am extremely deeply excited about. Thank you for having me. Oh, yes, of course. And we'll link all of that in the show notes as well. And we know you're living a busy mommy life. So thank you so much for taking the time out and hanging out with us. For all of our listeners, what are you manifesting? We want to know. Why don't you put it in the body of your review on Apple Podcasts for us? Give us five stars Uh and in that review, lay it out for us. Put it out in the universe. What better way than put it in text for everyone to see? What are you trying to manifest? And what have you learned from this episode with Aaron? On that note, we're going to wrap up this episode. Stay Stay Datable. Datable. The Datable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Datable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay datable. Primary Election Day is Tuesday, June 4th. Now is the time to make a plan. Whether you plan to vote absentee by mail, in person at your county auditor's office before Election Day, or at your polling place on June 4th, it's important you take steps now to make your plan at voterready.iowa.gov. Remember, Election Day is Tuesday, June 4th. Find more info at voterready.iowa.gov. This message is presented by the Iowa Secretary of State.